Hey, what's going on? So today we are going to talk about the fifth set of strings uh, on the Les Paul, the Epiphone Les Paul. And then we are also going to talk about whether you should raise your tailpiece. Does that kill sustain? Does it ruin the entire tone of the guitar because you raise this up a quarter of an inch? We're going to talk about it and um, we're going to test it and we'll see what happens. And if I'm wrong about what I think, then, then we'll say so, but I don't think so. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. First thing we gotta do is move my new RC car out of the way. So for those of you that don't know, I started a new channel just for the RC car stuff. And I bought a new Axial uh, SCX-10 III kit. So I'm actually building it from scratch. So there's the body. Um, it's just easier to store it so I left the wheels on the axles. It's got portal axles, it's kind of cool. So there's the front and the rear. And then I've got the frame built. Whoops, I just threw the transmission on the floor. I got the frame built, suspension links are all there, all that stuff. So there's gonna be a YouTube video about the assembly of this thing over on the other channel. So we'll get this stuff out of the way. and get the Les Paul on the bench.
All right, so let's move on to the age-old question. If we raise up this tailpiece, are we going to kill all the sustain and the less pull? So I guess we should just do it. Um, there's real no science to it. That's the whole reason we're doing it. <laughs> Alright, so I've got all of the sustain measurement. Well, I basically just strum it as easily, evenly as I can. And um, I just did that for the string test. So let's go ahead and raise this thing up. Alright, so we're raised up. And uh, yeah, basically the idea is to try to mimic uh, like a wraparound tailpiece, which is also stupid. I'm going to reserve any judgment until we actually are editing the video and I want to look at the sound files on the screen because we'll be able to actually see uh, the difference between all five sets of strings that we put on here and to the best of my ability anyways to replicate you know the difference in ring out time uh, that each set has but then also for this the difference between putting the tailpiece all the way down and putting it all the way up and um, we'll just literally measure those 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 times we'll just look at it on the screen we can tell which one's longer it won't be that hard and then uh, we'll talk about the results after but first we need to discuss the five se different sets of strings and find out which was which okay so strings finish the rest of my coffee strings week one Diadario NYXLs. <clears throat> this is probably not a surprise to many. They were the brightest, jangliest, super loud, metallic sounding strings. My opinion, everybody wants to like them because they're the most expensive and everybody wants to like them because of that bright, jangly sound. Um, my opinion is, why does the string deserve to color the sound of the guitar that much? I don't like that actually. You're like, ooh, these are really bright strings. But then, I don't know. I just don't like how it colors the sound of the guitar. That is my opinion. I will not use these. I know everybody likes them because they think they last a long time, etc., etc. But I don't like them because of that. I just, I just feel like they, they influence the guitar too much. All right, Ernie Ball Paradigms. This was a really, really, really big surprise to me, um, and maybe to many of you in the, in the comments because everybody said oh week one was super bright and maybe in comparison these were sounded very dead they were just guitar strings to me i think i even said that they are just guitar strings um which is disappointing because these are also very expensive uh in comparison to other sets 
and they were just guitar strings. Now, if they last a month and you don't have to change them and they sound like just guitar strings, brand new ones the whole time, that would be cool. I might actually get another set of these and play them for like a long time, like a month and just listen to them before and after and see how they sound in a longer term setup. But they're very expensive and I don't care about that that much and I don't mind changing strings, so I actually probably won't. These won't be a choice for me either. Elixirs. I, you know I hate them. I've talked about them in every one of these tests. They suck. They sounded the deadest. They felt terrible. And I know everybody thinks they're amazing, but I just I can't do it. Don't even like them. Week four was very interesting. Um, these are another set that I just said, they just sound like guitar strings. They are just, they're just strings. Literally, that's, that's all they are, they're good. And what's really weird about it is, the reason I said that is because they're brand new, but they didn't sound brand new when you put them on. They sounded just like guitar strings, which is interesting because when you have a pure nickel string like that, that's what it's supposed to sound like. It's supposed to have that not jangly, just guitar string sound, which makes sense because that's what these are. Didn't know that at the time, now I do. Makes a lot of sense. Last set of strings. Actually, you know, the other thing too, is these were the set that I had a hard, hardest time finding. Um, I finally got them on Amazon, of all places. But I went around to a bunch of local stores and nobody had them. All right, <clears throat> these were a big surprise to me. Um, I put these on the Les Paul, played them, and I actually really liked them. Again, in the just guitar strings category, they're just good strings. Um, what I liked about them over these ones, especially playing them back to back and not knowing it, these were faster feeling. So they had like the fast, slick feeling of the, the Diodario NYXLs. They didn't suck totally like these. They were a third of the price of these. And they just had that kind of fast, nice feeling, nice, smooth, slick feeling. Um, and they're the cheapest strings here, which is really interesting. Will I choose them? Um, out of the five of these, I would probably play these the most. I like them. Uh, they're good. They're just guitar strings. So here's the thing. People put way too much time and thought into this. I mean, we've taken five weeks to figure this out. Um, and this is why it's important to do this, you guys, because look at the packaging difference and the price difference between these two. Yeah, they sound different. These are like three times the cost. These are not sustainable for most budget guitar players, and these are. In the end, will you get great results from the cheap strings? Yup, you definitely will. Um, will they stand out as some kind of like, oh dang, you know, no. But they're strings, man. What's really interesting too about it is when we did this with an acoustic setup, we did the acoustic strings test like, I don't know, a couple years ago. We did the same thing. It, it was way, way, way bigger difference. Like when you played an acoustic guitar with a different set of strings, it really changed how the guitar sounded. Um, with an electric guitar, it just didn't make that much difference. It was more in the feel and the playability of it and how it felt in your hands, which also makes a massive difference. Obviously, I preach that all the time, like how it feels in your hand, it makes a big difference. Um, now that being said, these can do that for five bucks a set or whatever. So, uh, super, super stoked, love them. This was really fun. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start editing this video and I'm actually gonna cut in and we're gonna talk about this sustain thing with the tailpiece on the Les Paul. So let me get this edited so like we can see the sound waves and stuff, uh, the sound files on the computer, and then we'll discuss that part. Okay, so here is Let's make this a little bigger so everybody can see it and I'll bring you over there. So here is tailpiece up, tailpiece down, back to back in the video. This is tailpiece down, this is tailpiece up. 
And if you look at the decay, like DB for DB, so right here to right here, and actually if we just cut that right there, uh, here, let's just cut that. Okay, so right here to right here, uh, it's basically the same. I mean, within, let's just line them up. It's like within, come on, man. Basically the same amplitude, the same length. It decays off a little differently, but that could be how I'm strumming it, but it's basically the same. And I didn't do these back to back, right? I like did them in different times. So this, I, I didn't like, anyway, there was really no way to cheat, but there you go. I mean, come on, this is not that big a deal. So let's talk about this. I know that wasn't hundred percent scientific, but the bottom line is it doesn't have to be. Here's the thing. It doesn't make any difference. Um, did it change the playability of the guitar? I mean, maybe there could be an argument for that. I, I mean, I pl I've been playing that guitar for like five weeks straight. And then to make that change, it did not make any major feel difference to me. It did not make any difference in the amount of sustain that the guitar had. Now, when I did that, I played it over and over and over again to make sure that I got the... Now, I couldn't see the sound files when I was doing it, but just by feel, I was trying to be as consistent as possible. I did it before, I did it after, and I got it super consistent. And you could see, if you looked at them all out, you could tell I was doing it pretty, pretty consistently. Um, the length of the fall off, the sustain, was exactly the same before and after. There was no difference, no matter how many different times I tried to do it, uh, different ways. And then playing it, you couldn't tell any difference. I mean, you just play the guitar. Stop arguing about this crap. It's the dumbest thing ever. Now, here's one thing that can change, or did change a little bit. When you tighten the, the screws all the way down, you can feel it in the guitar more. But just because you can feel it transfer to your body doesn't mean there's more sustain. And I think this is a huge thing with guitar freaks in general. They feel like resonance, like when I strum the guitar and I can feel it shake all through my body, that that is some amazing thing. That's not, that has nothing to do with it. The guitar vibrating in your lap is not sustain, period. It's not. So stop arguing about it. This is the dumbest thing ever. I. You don't even get me going. I actually, I keep saying I want to do a video um, with an audiologist because I want to talk about why people have this misconception that the more the guitar vibrates in your hand and the more it vibrates in your lap, that transfer of energy from the guitar to you is not sustained, but why people feel like, whoa, the resonance of the guitar, it's going to be amazing. It's baloney because your brain is tricking you. That's all there is to it. If there is an audiologist out there that can please get in touch with me, I want to talk to you about it. But you gotta be a proper scientist, not just somebody that works at Walmart giving people hearing aid batteries. I need like a proper, I need somebody proper. Um, and obviously this is a bit of a soapbox for me, but because this is one of the biggest tone fallacies of all time on the internets, um, that's why I'm so passionate about it. Thanks for hanging out. Make sure you put in the comments what you thought of all of this. Let me know what strings you're using. Make sure you check out patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone. Um, and here's everybody this week that is part of that. I appreciate you all very, 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 very much because uh, you are a lot of the reason why we can do all of these tests because this is what we use the Patreon money for is buying this stuff to test. We are gonna give away this Les Paul when we hit 50,000 and we're gonna give away a Jackson V when we hit 50,000 subscribers. So make sure you hit the subscribe button if you have not already. And uh, that's all I got, man. You guys are awesome. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you soon.